Hi, this is Daniel Thomas Sandra Daly here. This is an old height sermon on, from on the Rainbow Torah. The Rainbow Torah is Genesis 1 1 to Genesis 11 9, from God creating the world to the Tower of Babel incident. And it involves the ancestors of all modern mankind today, after the flood. Now, um, this. Um, this sermon is the Rainbow Torah teaches history. The Rainbow Torah teaches history. Now, um, yes, in the Advancing Now movement, we I generally recognise the documentary hypothesis as, as somewhat valid. Uh, that uh, there are different sources and different strands of authorship within the Torah as a whole, the five books of the Torah, five books of Moses, as it's traditionally called, in that uh, the Yahweh sourced and the Yellowist source and the Priestly source and the Deuteronomist source, and they might be broken down a little bit more and whatever, but um, I think a, a good book I like is by Richard Ellen, Elliot Friedman, a conservative Jewish scholar, his, uh, his work, Who Wrote the Bible? And um, I think that's a reasonably decent explanation into how the Torah potentially was formed over a period of time. I'm not saying he's right on every issue. He's probably not. It's probably not exactly scripture, what he's saying. Uh, but um, generally, the, the idea that the different, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of Israel, when they're divided, had different historical information, different traditions in them different sources of information that compiled that ultimately it was compiled later on. I think that was probably true enough. Now, the ultimately the argument is how valid is the information of the Torah, the history that we have in these early sections, that's that's a question ultimately which comes down to our faith, I suppose. But we teach in the advancing no movement as our general position that I guess it's historical enough. We uphold creationism, that can be demonstrated from, from historical studies and scientific studies in creation science. And it's clear enough that the world is about 6,000 years old at this stage. And uh, Israel's there as a people, and the, the, the Bible is true, okay? The Hebrew Bible, it's a true enough historical record. It's a product of its day, and the time it comes from, and it doesn't have to be infallible in every detail. Even though it's God inspired, I don't think God was dictating to them everything they should write, the writers of the Tanakh. They were just working it out as, they ca as it came along, and they canonized it at a certain date, and it was officially canonized also at the Council of Jamnia, although a car has pointed out to me that it, that it existed as a canon prior to that date, but it was also ratified there. And um, yeah, that's the scriptures. They're historical enough. Early Genesis, this is not the point I'm making, but I'm, I'm getting towards a point. Early Genesis, the Rainbow Torah, is a basic sort of history book. It's true enough. I think we can rely on the details well enough to use it as doctrine anyway. Uh, the Noah story probably does have different strands which compiled it together. But uh, how true the, the either strand is, we don't know for sure. But so, creation science firms well enough that there was a flood. So, um, you can get caught up in insisting on absolute literal truth of it all, if you wish to, from an, a fundamentalist point of view. I don't think it's necessary to have that approach, because I don't think uh, a faith-filled, you know, documentarian approach weakens the faith at all either anyway. We still accept it generally as scripture and as the word of the Lord, the word the message, the work which God has brought forth in mankind for us to learn from. That's not really challenged and we still obey it in a pretty much a literal sort of sense anyway. It's still the scriptures. Now, um, so when we come to early Genesis, that's history. That's an ancient history book for the history of mankind and God's dealing with mankind in the early years. It's a history book. And that's that the history that it teaches is the foundational history of human society. And that's where I'd like to bring in my point that 
that uh, Rainbow Torah teaches history, and by teaching history, it justifies the concept of history unfolding, of course, and as learning history and teaching history and ongoing history from after that period through through mankind's history up to this point and recording history the rainbow torah records history so obviously god thinks it's a good idea that we keep historical records and we keep a history of mankind so history is a valid religious normal concept for Noah Hides to be involved with historical records. If you need something to study at a university, history is good enough. History is a valid, legitimate, and normal thing. Noah Hides should keep genealogies, obviously, which is a big part of our historical records as shown in Genesis 5 and Genesis 10, but we should all, I think, I recommend to uh, no hides that, Adamites and no hides that they keep, uh, that, that they write an autobiography of a life, maybe as they progress through it or later on in life, and that they leave that as a legacy to their children and they have that done. Every no hide I, I recommend should write an autobiography at some point in their life, their life story, their life history, and leave it as a legacy for their family at the least. History is important. It's how we learn our lessons, it's how we understand life, it's how we understand how this world all works and fits together. And it's a thing which God approves of and sanctions. The Rainbow Torah teaches history and promotes the idea of history. And knowing that, as no hide world progresses, it's okay for us to research the history of the early times and since then and put together our own historical works and writings and records of the history of mankind studied from the sources available in in a sanctified sort of Noahide product of that history. Rainbow Tor Torah teaches history and history is a valid scriptural concept.